A warm welcome to a popular Saints, the 38th edition of this season, 2023-24 season, on the 17th of April. A surprisingly chilly 17th of April, it must be said. But we were warmed last night at Clarence Park. We shall come to that in a minute. Before that, we will look at Saturday's game against Worthing. We, being myself, David Tavner, a uh, man at the controls, Jake Ellicott. Hello, Dave. Hello, Lee. Hello, everyone. I hope you're well. Hello, Lee. Lee Wood. Hi, Lee. Hi, boys. Sorry, I'm just replying to Mrs. Wood. I've got to do it, otherwise she'll do it. It's just not worth me hassle. So, right, OK. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. How are we doing? We're off to a flying start, aren't we? <laughs> uh, Jake wasn't here last week because he's under the farm. You've got to take orders now. Right, let's get this going. Uh, last Saturday, uh, we were home to Worthing, looking to avoid a fourth successive defeat, but we successfully achieved a fourth successive home defeat, I should say. Uh, what a start of a game. Two goals in the opening three minutes. Uh, first half was fantastic. Uh, it was open. Uh, they had their noses ahead by the interval. For me, for the opening 20 minutes, Mitchell Weiss was on fire. He, he scored that goal in, what, third minutes to pull us level. And um, they couldn't touch him for a while. But um, it was just an enjoyable game, wasn't it? Eventually, though, maybe it did their class tell. They were very composed, I thought. One of the most composed sides we played on the ball, um, and they took their two one-on-one on one -on -one chances quite superbly. And we were denied by, was it, Oli Wright in goal for them, having rather a good game. But um, overall, enjoyable, but not the result we wanted because that was the end of our hopes of making the playoffs. But that's your entire season in one game, isn't it? Really good performance, really entertaining game. Couldn't give a monkey's about the result. You must have been loving it, Tavs. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, uh, loving it. Maybe it's pushing it a bit too far. What about you, Jake? Yeah, it was. Um, I, I do agree. I thought their quality did show through in the end. They're they're a good team. They've spent a lot of money on that team this season. It has to be said. Um, they're not exactly a, a club that have come up out of the blue and sort of you know they're, they're doing well. Um, and it was just a game of well fine margins in extent, wasn't it? You know, just before their three two. Um, up the other end, we saw a team that can't take their one-on-one -on -one chances, um, not able to do that. And then, what, 10 seconds later, Worthing are in the lead. And then after that, Worthing were able to take, just about take control of the game, weren't they? But it has to be said, Ollie Wright in the Worthing goal made quite a few decent saves. You know, again, a case of us not putting chances away. But it has to be said, I know it did kill our playoff hopes officially, but I don't think anyone particularly in the ground had real, much expectation that our playoff, playoff hopes would be still there at 5pm. So I don't think the result was that surprising. We said it the other week, didn't we? We went into that run of three successive home games and that's when you really look to push on in that final flurry. And we couldn't do it. Um, 11 home defeats for the season. Only the 10th time we've lost that many at home. It's a shocking record. Um, losing to the likes of Worthing, you can accept because they are a good side. It's the other defeats further back in the season that have cost us. Um Interesting, interesting comment by John Meeks afterwards. Uh, he said uh, we were the best footballing side in the league, along with Worthing. Now, that game put us bottom of a current form table. Uh, and uh, last night's win still keeps us in the bottom four of a current form table. Does that really suggest we want we are a joint best footballing side in the league? I think some of the performances this season have sort of flirted with that comment um but we've seen so such extremes this season i think if you base it has been a season of two halves i think the first half i mean we were sort of languishing weren't we we were we were struggling for for consistency we we were struggling for goals and then performances weren't great um fans were getting a bit narky on the terraces and it wasn't sort of falling into place at all second half of the season, Nobby sort of turns it around with the introduction of a super new striker. And then the consistency sort of flowed on from that, really. But then again, Nobby then left, Mixi took over, and there were some absolutely stellar performances. You know, we we do reiterate, we touched upon this last week, Torquay away, Maidstone away, some really good footballing uh, showcase going on. However, and it sort of gave us a false full sort of sense of security, didn't it? It's, you know, we were playoff bound, fellas, weren't we? Everyone was firing. It was a really good sort of team ethic we got going on there. We played some direct uh, stuff when we needed to. We played some really tidy stuff when we needed to. Defensively, we were sound. 
as the partnership of Partington uh, and Michael Clark. MJ was doing his MJ things. SJ9 was banging them in. And you had cameo appearances from the likes of Rizzullo, Bantz and Blackman, etc. All things going remarkably well. Then the last month, it just fell away. And there's nothing to suggest that that we were the best footballing side in the division at that point, Tavs. I think there was a lot of talk about bottle, wasn't there, Jake, on the terraces on Saturday and the fact that we weren't consistent enough. We have been playing some of the most fantastic football, but I think to say that we are the best footballing or one of the best football sides in the division, results don't show that, mate. Go on, go on then, Jake. Uh, give us your opinion of it. Well, based it purely upon upon the league table, we're not, are we? To be honest, um, this season, um, we've played some good football at times. We've had good performances. Talked to fans about this season on reflection. Won't have reached the playoffs, but there have been good moments, mainly away from home. So, unfortunately, those those quite large crowds at Clarence Park haven't necessarily seen it. Um, but yeah, it, the football has been good. It's not been great. I did think actually Saturday, Saturday's display and Saturday's football was better from the Saints than it had been in recent weeks. It wasn't mm-hmm. amazing still. We had defensive issues, but it was an improvement. And it was an improvement that I think most Saints fans on the terraces could could just about deal with, having seen the last few weeks before that in terms of displays. So, yeah, bit of an improvement there, at least. I must admit, I'm more in your camp with that one, your assessment there, Jake. Um Torquay away was one of the greatest city performances I've ever seen. All right, as we found out, Torquay got massive problems, but we still played fantastic stuff on the day. Um, Taunton, I thought, just lay down and died at the park. Um, we didn't have to be great there. We did what we had to do, and we did a very good job on it. Maystone, <laughs> I thought we really battled. I'm not sure about stellar football, but we did play well. First quarter now, 20 minutes, about second half there. Um, I, I, Overall, I think I've seen a lot more enjoyable games in the 2005-06 season, the promotion season, and 92-93, that wipes the floor with this season. Um, it, there were some good performances. Um, I wouldn't put anywhere near one of the great performances. And, and I suspect John's basing his best football inside statement on the passing. Um, we haven't got the stats here, but early in the season, we were top of the passing table. Oh, gee whiz. Um, what's, See, Graham Taylor used to say, get the ball in the box 25 times, you've got 25 times, 25 chances to score. Do it our way, you get the ball in the box half a dozen times, you've got half a dozen chances of scoring. Um, it just doesn't have to be big boot, but you can be more direct around the penalty area and be more definite. And uh, I think that's where we, where we let ourselves down a bit. I thought we saw elements off that on Saturday. I think we were sort of less pussyfooting around with the intricate sort of triangles and we were just got the ball in the box a bit earlier and I think it did cause trouble I don't think you can sort of do that religiously um, but what I, I think it was a more of a I think it was a, a throwaway comment from uh, Meeksy after the uh, the game I think in the cold light of day he probably would have had that comment back um, <clears throat> I don't I'm with you Tavs I mean you know it, it, on the whole the season has been dis- disappointing in terms of the results and the performances and where we lie I mean Jake alluded to it there. You know, there were there's no one who went to the game on Saturday thinking we were in a chance of the playoffs. Realistically, the the, the playoff games were lost with the games of the likes against Braintree and Chippenham, etc. I just don't think performances, I don't think the stats, I don't I don't think the position would suggest that we're a good footballing side by any stretch. But also I think a lot of it is uh, related to what the opposition managers say. You know, early doors in the season, there were how many opposition managers were sort of coming out saying, oh, we are the best footballing side that they've played. Well, yeah, but you've only played like three games and two of those have been against Braintree. So, you know, it doesn't really sort of set the bar particularly high. But look, fellas, you know, it's been a disappointing season. Um, There are players there who have underperformed. And if they have performed, it hasn't been consistently enough. And I think, they need to look at themselves and say, right, what could we have done? This is it. It's, it is the time of year when when the big post-mortem starts, right? But there's nothing, as you say, Dave, to to conclude that we are a good footballing side consistently. No. Uh, if we're to challenge properly next season, not fleetingly like we've done this season, then there do have to be a lot of changes. I mean, it's, it's probably five players in the starting lineup the past couple of games. <laughs> 
I, fortunately, I'm not manager. I wouldn't have at the club probably. Um, if if you if you're going to make that challenge, um, just like some more consistency from certain players, uh, and we're we're not getting it, um, which we we've all alluded to. Um, I don't know. We'll, we won't go onto the squad individually at the moment. We'll be. We may have a look at the end of the season and see what we think. Uh, a crowd of uh, two thousand. Well, it's, it's funny. It's like reading the, the raffle tickets when it first of all it was announced. I think two thousand four hundred odd. It went down to two thousand one hundred odd. Um, last night before it was about eight hundred. They announced it thirteen hundred odd. And but amongst that number on Saturday, David Noble. I didn't see him, but I think oh. you two may have done. I've heard of him. Wasn't he Wildstone manager? Yeah, it was yeah, it was being the word, I think. I, I, I did bump into him um during half time. He looked he looked quite chipper for someone who's just got the boot after a month in employment. So he's done well there. Um but he was sort of shaking hands as though he was like the second coming of the Messiah. Um, you know, smiling his way around Clarence Park, probably the happiest I've actually seen him. Um, at Clarence Park to be fair to you so fair play to Nobby yeah it was a real weird one wasn't it you sort of half expected him to sort of be there um, given his recent sort of turmoils but I think he was a very eager um, visitor to Clarence Park should we say on Saturday it's interesting um, emails I've had this week uh, go along with what we said on the pod last week we don't want him back. We don't want to take him back. He dumped us in it mid-season and it moved on. Everything has moved on. And and his, his time as manager at Clarence Park, we made it clear last week, but we think it's gone. The emails support that. And on the terraces last week, towards, uh, last night talking to the supporters, they said to say, and also the emails on supporters said another thing. I think it's time we actually brought in from outside. We totally changed it and get a whole new broom in there, in the dugout and not come promote from inside is the club needs uh, clearing out you go along with that has no, not, not no, the cool. clear out sorry has not the clear out i mean we've only finished five points off the playoffs i know it's we're not dartford we played them in a playoff semi-final last season now they're playing the ishman league next season you know it could, it could be much worse um i don't agree with that i think you've got to stick with what we have at the minute which is you know fine um david noble being there was a bit a bit unusual for him to stay around as well for the awards and be there. I know he had two fair, he spoke to a lot of fans, um, had a few interesting comments for quite a few fans, which is fair enough. It, you know, fair play for him to be there. Yeah, it's, it's another nice little twist at the end of an interesting season, I guess. Um, but yeah, sorry, Lee. No, I was just going to say, really, to in response to that email or the general consensus that you've got there, Dave, has Meeks you not earned? a right to at least have a stab at it, perhaps. The thing is, we've always looked at the owners that have been quite um, loyal, you know, and, and they've never been one sort of rush into anything per se. Um, but I think, you know, has, has Meeksy not at least earned the right to have his five minutes in the sun? Because with a whole new, with a whole pre-season behind him, uh, possibly an influx of players doing things his way, then I think come the autumn or come Christmas, then I think it's probably a real gauge of where he's at as a manager. But again, it's another set of chopping and changing if we... And I also, I think you spoke about his lack of experience at this level last week. You're absolutely spot on. I don't think that means he shouldn't have the right to at least give it a fair crack. Yeah, I think so. fair enough. He's been managed what, 17 games, 23 points, which won't get you anywhere. Um, but you're right, his own squad next season. The difference being, Ian Anson came in, took it over a side that's hell-bent on trying to get relegated. <coughs> he, he saved us from relegation. We had some good seasons. We had a couple of struggles as well. I can't be ignored as well. Um, Nobby came in when the side was on the downward slide. It made a poor start of the season. Uh, he was we were going quite well when he left. Meeks came in, the side wasn't struggling, but it's tailed down, isn't it? It's tailed off. Um, you, you two have made a lot about George Hoddle recent weeks. How serious were the club in getting staying in the playoffs once he, once he went? We didn't go out and get another quality midfielder. We got a director, well, 
have we got a director of football? There's one in the background, allegedly. Um, but Did we you? didn't go out and get we we didn't get, out and get another quality midfielder to replace George Hoddle. We brought in an unknown seventeen year old from MK Johns. Who, Meeksy himself says we don't know his best position yet, so he obviously wasn't a direct replacement for Hoddle. And you just think the club missed a chance there. Yeah, but don't forget, the last unknown 17-year-olds that we get in were McConnell and Hoddle themselves. So I don't think it's a really fair comparison. You never know how these things are going to pan out, Tabs. But also, mate, you know, midfielders of a certain quality, they cost money if you're going to get one in. But also, it takes time and preparation and negotiations to get something sorted out with these, like with a, a pro club, for example. I think it was very unfortunate. And I don't think, look, this all stems from Cambridge sacking their manager. If they don't do that, then Hoddle's still here at the end of the season. And who knows where, where we could have been. Chances are we probably would have been involved in the playoffs. He was that good a, a, good a player. Um I think it's unfortunate, of course. And I think we are going to have to rely a lot more on these loan systems from the pro clubs. But overall, looking at it, it's stand as well, right? Because the players who have come in, they have been decent and they have contributed telling factors to, to the side. The fact he wasn't our player shows a problem. You build your own squad at the start of the season. Nobody can take that player during the season. You haven't got this problem as... A his parent club bringing him back. No, he's your player. You keep him. You get a loan player and you've always got this problem and uh, we've suffered from it this time. Um, so, <laughs> we're going to lose, what, another two or two, sorry, Jake, we're going to lose another two or three loan players now at the uh, end of the season. All yours, Jake. Yeah, no, I, I, do, I think, yeah, I think that is always a valid point and you make it every season, Dave, and unfortunately you do prove to be correct every season uh, to some extent. But then on the counterpoint, I'd say, would we be able to sign a, quality, a midfielder of Hoddle's quality? be honest in this division do we have the pulling power the wages oh. the, the transfer budget to even do that someone like probably a charlie ruff at chelmsford this season he scored 17 odd goals from midfield absolutely superb i know hoddle didn't have that goal scoring but probably a similar level of quality of player i just don't think we have that at the minute in terms of pulling pulling power so the loan market i think did did a job there for us didn't it but it does always leave you to that vulnerability Pulling power, we've got average goats of 1,700, several above 2,000. We should have a pulling power. Um, mm -hmm. We should be a great attraction for a lot of players, really. Um, yeah. Maybe, is our budget right to attract those sort of players? Uh, according to the books, we're losing money anyway. So, no, we can't attract those players. Uh, is yeah, that worthing yeah. done? Yeah, I think it is, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right, last night we we did avoid that fifth successive home league defeat. One 0 win over Hampton and Richmond, formerly Borough. Um, an early goal from Gio Rasulu. Uh, Meeksy says fantastic goal. No, it wasn't. It was a cross that went wrong. Um, your take on it, Jake? Yeah, I mean, technically, aren't they still Borough on some league tables because they didn't fill out the paperwork to get that bit of their move, name removed during the summer quickly enough? But anyway. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I, it was a good display. I think Worthing was an improvement, and I thought last night was another improvement, a gradual improvement. Unfortunately, it's come too late for our playoff hopes, but it is good to see us get that. I mean, it could have so easily, I think, after after Saturday, it could have been so easy for it to just tail... It's already tail spun, hasn't it? But for just, you know, Tuesday night and then Saturday at Tombridge, two games that could be really difficult. You don't really want to go to. The players aren't really up for it, but it was good to see. And of course, against a team that had and still do a lot to fight for and I thought the big difference between the two teams wasn't necessarily footballing I thought it was actually mentality and approach wise yeah. I thought we approached it much more positive than Hampton did and it was absolutely bizarre to see them play in the way that they did while we looked much more comfortable much more happy on the ball much more willing to go forward as well their keeper made a couple of really really good saves second half as well um I thought the big thing was mentality and it's probably that menace lads mentality that unfortunately we'd been lacking really in the two weeks beforehand. Totally agree with you. I, I thought Hampton's uh, attitude towards the game was terrible. Uh, they're, they're not in a good run. I think they'd won, was it one, two, three, four, five? Six. They'd won one in seven before last night. I mean, they're determined not to stay in the playoffs. So we showed them how to do it properly. Um, but they, 
they were just reluctant to come out and attack us, weren't they? But the chances they got were from us doing that stupid passing around at the back. Your goalkeeper's a goalkeeper. He plays with his hands. Don't expect him to pass it along the ground and not give it to their centre-forward like NJ decided to keep doing last night. Um, it, 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 <laughs> it's the only way Hamden were going to get into the game. As you say, um, their goalkeeper... Oh, I'm not going to pronounce that. I'm off for goodness sake. Um, <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> Come on, Adam. be brave. Give it a go. Adam. Um, <laughs> he made two or three really good saves. Um, and, and we deserved a win. No two ways about it. Yeah, it was nice it was... to see Callum Tripp get a complete nine, uh, 90 minutes as well. He was probably the figure that actually stood out the most, given that he's barely featured. Well, he's not really featured at all in the league for us, has he? And I think he's, you know, he's coming in as a centre-half on last night at, at, on the right of the back three. And I thought he looked all right there. He looked comfortable one or two moments, a bit scared, a bit gave the ball away in a couple of positions. But otherwise, he looked comfortable, considering that's the first time he's played in a league game for us in that position. It was really impressive. And it just makes you wonder, would it have been worth chucking him in two, three games ago and see seeing what he could have done at the back? Maybe you don't know. But overall, I thought the team seemed a little better balance-wise last night, which was good. And the players, again, it just felt like all the players just battled a bit more, tried a bit harder. I don't know if it was because Hampton were so poor themselves that that maybe made us look a little bit better. But yeah, I say, I think Callum Tripp was probably the star man amongst a few others. And it's just generally the approach was much more positive last night. And it was just really, really good to see to at least finish the Clarence Park season or Clarence Park leg of the season with a win in front of a crowd that, as we've talked about a few times this season, hasn't seen... A lot of victories, it's fair to say. Hmm. Hampton's attitude has now left them needing to get a win, really, to be dead certain of going into the playoffs. Away to Maidstone on Saturday. Well done, lads. Put yourselves in that position. Absolutely <laughs> lunacy, wasn't it? Yeah, um, that's right. Oh, it made no sense at all. Their supporters, apparently, half time, uh, were all spitting blood. Just couldn't understand uh, what was going on. And they didn't change him in the second half. The game got a lot faster, I thought, Jake. Um, yeah. Got a lot faster, got more open. But I still didn't see any more attacking intent from them. And, and we were, well, we did make quite a few mistakes with a passing. We were comfortable. Yeah, and actually the game opening up actually ex- made, well, I thought we exploited it more than they did as well. It suited us more. They yeah. they struggled to construct uh, at the back and they saved Debois. I think that's how we're pronouncing it, the keeper. Um, he, he kept them in it really at the end. So really good. Good to see Bailey Brown back, a familiar face that I forgot was at Hampton and Richmond, so that was a treat. <laughs> well, he, he was their biggest threat, wasn't he? He did that wonderful volley just over the bar in the second half, and uh, he actually did very well, I thought, when he came on. Biggest, both literally and figuratively. Ooh. Uh, okay. What about us? Um, players coming back, Romeo Akinola started the league game, played for an hour. Possibly a little bit off the pace at the moment, but it's interesting to chuck him in, giving him a go, giving him an hour. He's he's always going to be off the pace, isn't he? He hasn't played football for two years, apart from the last two months, or well, you know, since February twenty twenty two, wasn't it? Um, he looked okay. I think I would have rather have seen Zane Banton in that position, to be honest myself, um, which I think is an opinion that was replicated by a few other supporters. But he he did okay, um, but I don't think any of us were expecting much from him, or have been expecting much from him since his return. Talking of Zane, when he came on Saturday, two terrific shots and he had a third one charged down. He he was very unlucky not to get on the score sheet. And I agree with you. Um, I think it would have helped us yesterday had he started. Um, Gio Rasula, I thought, was awful Saturday. Uh, but he made up for it. I thought he had one of his best games last night. He did uh, really well. He got that fluky goal. And uh, that's the sort of performance I thought we should have been seeing more often from him this season. Yeah, I agree. It was a great shot, wasn't he? Um, and he made the most of the space, actually. I thought he did really well. Um, second half, he probably should have scored again. He had a great header, well saved by their keeper low down. Um, and that's a Gio Rusulo that you want. And I don't think we've had enough this season. If you think about those good wins, Torquay, Maidstone, Gio Rusulo played big parts in all those and he was a big player. But unfortunately, mm. in those games in recent weeks, Torquay, uh, Torquay Truro, Chippenham, etc., he has gone missing, hasn't he? And he's not featured. Maybe that's shape or formation or the opposition have been sitting in so deep that he just hasn't been able to do the magic that you would expect from a player of his quality. So it's good to see him perform, but you need to see that every week. 
One of the disappointments recent weeks, the lack of goals for Sean Jeffers and the lack of chances for him, really. We're not creating them for him. Um, the balls from the wings have been absolutely awful. The best one at it, I would say, has been Jack James. He's been the most consistent one, decent crosses. The actual wingers, uh, they failed abysmally. I know Dom scored that great header on Saturday, but um, it, his crossing has been really poor. That was our uh, 100th goal of the season, by the way, in all competitions. Uh, and I think that's an area where we've got to look at next season. Better supply into the box. Yeah. And I think I think Lee would agree with this, that it comes down to the uh, fullbacks, doesn't it? We had a certain Tafari Moore and Devontae Stanley last <laughs> season. We don't have them this season. And the quality from the wide areas and the danger from the wide areas reduced, I think. Uh, well, that Lee, as well. You pick, yeah. Up, yeah. you pick up on this then, Lee. Um, what sort of season did uh, Devontae, uh, Devontae Stanley and Tafari Moore have with their new clubs? Cracking, I've heard. Um, <laughs> consistent, which is one thing that we've been lacking, I think, over the course of the season. I think to touch on Jake's point, I think we need to have a stellar support cast. And we, the likes of Geo, yeah, there's no point performing when the season's over. You know, when, when we needed him the most, he was found wanting. And again, that could be down to a multitude of things. I think Zane Bant has... has horrifically been been played out of position for the good part of two months now. You think back when he came back onto the scene, um, really away to Hemel over the festive period, from then on in, he's been showing great promise. And he's capable of, of getting you, you know, some goals if he's played in the right area. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, you smacked about it, haven't you? Consistency. And we've not really recruited well in, in the summer. And we're having to mend and make do quite a lot of fellas over the last three months now we've had to get a touch on a, a word on trip actually i think the uh, dave we saw him away at um at hitch in when we played uh burko in the cup i thought he looked good for someone of that size he he's got a fantastic engine he's got a real quality touch about him and he's got a little bit of burst of pace and i don't think it's it's uh, a shock to think that he can play center back as he was yesterday, and 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 not do a good job because, you know, he, he's, by all intents and purposes, going to be a professional footballer soon. So I think you've got to have that quality about you. Um, and I, I, I'm glad that he's got a a little bit of a run in the side. So hopefully he'll start again Saturday, but, you know, maybe. I think I said it before when uh, we signed him, that somebody who knows him well um, mm. said he's, he's a good lad. Uh, mm. Not only as, as a footballer, but as, as a person, as a good lad. Um, I, I thought at Burkamp said I thought he struggled when he was defending. I thought he looked much better when he came forward, and of course he got those two goals. But that's almost irrelevant. But um, the, yesterday was a lot more promising, and uh, it could could be a decent player in there. But look at it, only seventeen, as we say, um, quite a big step up. Yeah, I mean, he won. I think he won League Two Apprentice of the Year at the England, at the Football League Awards last week. Whatever that means in terms of Apprentice Year of the Year, I don't know. But I suppose the only positive is, you know, does this, does this maybe playing him these last few games maybe allow us to possibly get him back next season when maybe he's a bit more prepared to be playing centre half in a back three? Could that be something we're looking at? Is that potentially John Meeks was thinking about? I think that could could be a positive. But yeah, he was definitely one of the bright things from last night. And if he can suit a back three. Hopefully, he can maybe play a part next season if we can bring him in. I'm glad you mentioned he won the awards there, Jake, because um, uh, we're there in the season awards. There's nothing on the club website. There's nothing on the social media. Uh, we're not doing awards this season. I shouldn't have mentioned it. What's, what on earth is going on in the media department where we can't even promote our awards? Right, can anybody remember who won what? Um, player's player was Gio Rasulo. I believe, which was interesting. Fair play. Sean Jeffers won supporters player of the season. I think we talked about it last week, didn't we? He also won goal of the season for his goal at Worthing, the long range effort. And the sort of club man of the year was Ian Rogers, which I think. Well done, Trash. You voted for your boss. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh, good. Well, I'm glad somebody was paying attention. It would have been nice to see yeah. some pictures, but hey-ho, we didn't even get a team picture this season. Incredible, this day. I know you didn't get a team picture. Oh, 
Right. Speaking speaking of media team, did um did Matt Big manage to get hold of you on Saturday, Tav? Because he was dis- someone he claimed someone at the club was disputing the date of our actual birthday that you mentioned last week. Oh, they can dispute it as much as they like. <laughs> what date were they coming up with then? Oh, oh who, no. knows, mate? who who knows? Who knows? Let's not Thir- start. Thirteenth Thir- of April, nineteen oh eight. It, actually, the meeting was called at the Mayor's Parlour. In fact, that had to move it because so many people turned up. Um, it was some people who wanted to form an, a club to play under AFA rules rather than football association rules that we play under, which would have made it uh, an old boys club and uh, rather exclusive. But uh, George Wagstaff Simmons uh, got into rather heated discussions during the uh, meeting. Uh, they tried to shut him down, not let him speak. The Mayor said, no, let him speak. And uh, eventually he won the day. And the club playing by Football Association rules was formed, bearing the name St Albans City, and it was agreed we would wear the colours of a city, blue and gold, not yellow. Um, there you go. And that was the 13th of April again, as I said, and if anybody wants to dispute it, no way. And, well, and if any of you is wonder how Dave knows all that, he was actually there. Mm. So, there you go. He was the mayor, wasn't he? He, he was the mayor. Of course. That was Malcolm, surely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, uh, that's that lot out of the way. Um, this comes Saturday. We're down at Tunbridge Angels, another club that's doing a magnificent job at fading fast at the end of the season. <laughs> they beat us three two. Beat us three two down the park. They're now one two three four without a win. Uh, we want to sign off in style, don't we? They want to sign off in style. Let's hope it's not a typical end of season encounter. What do you reckon? I don't think it will be from us, based upon last night. Actually, I think we'll we'll probably go there. Hopefully, with the same positive and expressive attitude that we had last night, and the debil- the ability to play quite quite quick football, which worked really well last night against our Hampton side. You know, Tombridge. We know they've got a four G, three G pitch, whatever it's called these days, which hopefully should suit us. And I think you know. John Meek sort of made it clear, didn't he, that he wants to end it, the season on the high in his post-match last night. And I don't see why Saturday should be any different. And the players should just go down there and think, you know, why not go for it? I think Meeks needs a win. Uh, one win in the last uh, seven or eight, it would be if we don't. Uh, really would be dodgy ground. Um, you go out with two wins at the end. Would uh, boost things somewhat, wouldn't you agree, Lee? I would. I I think some of the players need it more than Mixi does because don't forget that you know not all these are up for up for renewal in the summer. Um, you're only as good as your last game, really. And I think that there's a couple of players there whose futures at this club might be a bit uncertain. Um, so I think just to remind everyone in the boardroom and in the dugout what they're capable of, wouldn't go and miss on Saturday. Yeah, because we don't know the contracts. Uh, who's got contracts at the end of next season and who's expires this year? You might have that information, Lee, but uh, Jake and I aren't now to have that sort of stuff. <laughs> you can't you can't imagine, really, that there's any players with a contract until next season, maybe. I don't know if Ben Smith does. I remember he signed a contract a little while ago, didn't he? Um, but apart from him, Sean Jeffers, we don't know, um, after the whole contract situation. So... Yeah, there's, there's quite a lot to play for. I think there'll be a lot of changes, so we'll get onto that next week. I think for Meeks, it would be nice to hit that 70-point figure this season. Wouldn't it? I know it doesn't really mean much to anyone else, but still, if we hit 70 points, it doesn't look like the worst season in the world, does it? No, um, it won't be. good if, if we win, we've got a chance of finishing higher than 11th. Because um, 11th is our lowest finish for... Uh, mm. A number of years, did have it written down here, but it's disappeared. Um, so he, he could do finishing higher. I don't know, but it's, it, in the grand scheme of things, it, it won't matter. But it just a nice gives a nice feeling for ending the season. We might as well do a prediction for it, eventually. Oh. What is yeah. it? Well, well, we're coming on to that in a minute. There's a question here somewhere. Um, so we started now, Jake. Yep, talking <laughs> to Jake. Oh, God. Prediction, Jake, Saturday, Tunbridge. Yeah. Oh, let's go. I think it'd be fun, free flowing. Now, the obvious joke would then be say nil nil, but I'm going to go for four two Saints. Lee? I'm not going to go four two. Uh, I'm going to go 
Sewell. Sewell. Yes. Um, yeah, I'll go uh, three one defeat. Right. I, I think Biscuit. we might win, but but, but I just wanted to uh, unsettle things a bit. Right. Any any other business before uh, we get onto some uh, correspondence? Correspondence. Go on, go on, Tabs. Let's have it. Come on. Well, you've got a couple of things, but I know you're going to save them for next season. Um, I've got one here from somebody. Um, that the beer prices at Clarence Park. Uh, it really? Won't, won't affect me. It doesn't affect me. And now, this is a, a quote. Um, it says, the club has stopped selling resolution at £4. At the forum, they said it was due to poor sales. But I always bought it. It was popular with other people when I was queuing up and sold out on several occasions. When I asked what the cheapest beer was yesterday, Hampton, no one knew. They had to check each beer on the payment device to get a price. The cheapest beer was Zealous at £5.50. A £1.50 increase on what he was paying. I've also checked the beer prices need to be clearly displayed <laughs> at licensed premises, which it is not. Unless there is some random exemption for open air football clubs, etc., which is unlikely. So, uh, Five pound fifty for a pint now. That's cheap. I think this season needs to be over pretty sharpish when people are emailing us about uh, the, cost, the price of beers. Well, look, if it's important to that to that person, then that's fine. But I think five pound fifty for a pint of 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 beer is cheap in comparison to the rest of St Albans. I know that a few of us have been stung for the good part of near, nigh on eight pounds, Jake. When we've gone to uh, the premium continental <laughs> stuff, so I mean, it's it's I've think, got to make money. I think that the the thing about the cost of the prices is, is one. I mean, I don't know if the beer prices have gone up this season. I John, I know John McGowan said at the fans' hall, didn't he? They they said they were renegotiating the deal, and the price would most likely go up. So I don't know if that's already happened for this season or if it's next season. Um, so yeah, but that's you know, I suspect the. the the topic of prices will probably be one that will be covered a lot in the summer, wouldn't it? With you expect a lot of clubs and maybe even our own certain prices may go up. You don't know. You're happy with five fifty, Joe? Unfortunately, it's not particularly a surprise these days. Um, that yeah, five fifty at a football ground isn't isn't awful. But then I suppose you could counter and say that there's nothing. There's no most mad squirrel beers would probably be seen as premium these days, wouldn't they? So there's nothing lesser than that available in the ground um that i'm sure some some members of the support would certainly appreciate can i just say also the situation of jake actually buying a round of beer in the ground in, in the first me. place um <laughs> can i i i've i've got a question on on the footballing scene which i believe is what we're all here for from a uh, pod groupie professor colkin um from a results perspective where have we improved or or not my sense is we've taken more points from playoff contenders and the relegation fodder than last season and the previous ones. But in the middle of the roaders, our results have seem a lot worse. Discuss. Oops. Go on, Jay, you discuss when I get some things up here. I think, I think that's a fair point, actually. If you think about the results against those in the top half, I think the main one, main defeat was probably Bath away, wasn't it? That was a disappointing one, but they like to talk, you can't really say talk either, they've only just stayed up. Um, Maidstone, <laughs> Yeov Yeovil at home, of course, was a brilliant one, wasn't it? And yeah. it, it's those middle of the road teams, but then Truro a couple of weeks ago was a classic St Auburn City result, wasn't it? Hunting for the playoffs yeah. and lose against a team that, that was struggling in the bottom four. So it has been, it's been such a quite a few fans last night saying it's been such a strange season in mm. terms of performances and displays and results and the up and down nature of the team and the various factors with managers leaving, players leaving, etc. It is really hard to say what pinpoint exactly where the differences are last to last season. But it's just, we had that brilliant middle, what, 40% of the season, didn't we? But it's been bookended by just mess, mm. I guess, is the best description of it. Being bookended by two two periods where it feels like the team hasn't really known what it's doing or what to do, and players have been injured. It's such a hard season to describe. Which well, a mess you mentioned, Jake, at the end of the season now, which is why people are saying we need a complete clear out. You can understand their way of thinking. Um, but as for the club's results against them, the four sides at the bottoms, that's eight games. We won seven of them. 
you wouldn't argue with that, would you? But um, a problem is at home. It's those 11 home defeats yeah. that have done us in. Mm. Um, but your way record, yeah, 10 wins, seven defeats. It's, it's good, 35 points. It's just atrocious home record that has uh, dragged us down. Um, none of the top three sides at the moment have uh, beaten us at home this season. Um, so you can say the record's there. It's good. In fact, we've only lost one of the six games against the top three sides. Um, but, oh, no, that table's out of date. That table is well out of date. God. Um, but, but, yeah, I'll go back to that then, the home, the home form. That's what's cost us. You, you, that's where you look to really build a foundation. And how we get it right for next season, I don't know. But it's something that John's got to address somehow. He has, and I think there's something to be said that the, the, the more <clears throat> more successful teams, the teams sound challenging, like to play football, and I think that suits us because it's we're sort of we tend to cope better. Um, we get you know we get given a lot more ball, and it's it plays to our strengths, um, with the exception of Braintree, who are just a bunch of donkeys, but you know they know how to win games, and, and I think that's. That's an area of our game which we are lacking. I think Mixie needs to look at this because there is no genuine plan B. You know, there's a lot of panic and there's a lot of perseverance with plan A. And sometimes it doesn't always pay off. And there's just, it seems quite fraught. And I don't believe we've got the right system for the players we've got at hand. And I think that needs to be addressed. As I say, and this all comes down to re recruitment, right? We've got good players, but they're out for half of the season with various injuries, you know, they're consistent ones. And the, the fact is, is that they, the players on hand haven't been good enough to get us into the playoffs um, as a collective, maybe individually, but that's, you know, that's not up to us. So the thing is, where do we go? We're beating the good teams because we're allowed to have, we're allowed to have the football and we play football. We are football inside, which I think is what John was alluding to in his comments post-match last night. But ultimately, You'd expect us again to beat the fodder towards the bottom. And there are some good sides down there, Dartford and, and, and haven't. It's been a lot of money. To finances, pumping your pumping your squad full of full of money isn't always the way to do it. Um, what I would say, Tavs, is that the players aren't some of the players aren't good enough, or they've been played out of position, and that, that's not going to help them. So, as terms of a clear out, mate, I don't know what you're thinking. I mean, it's an expensive project to do. And as you have alluded to, you know, there's no money. So it's going to be a real difficult one if that is the way they're going to go down in the summer. Well, there's that alleged investment coming into the club in the summer. We wait and see. Hey, uh, stop getting our me, hopes up. Might not be going into a team, of course. It could be for this wonderful new ground. Um, right, we'll we skip over that, I think. <laughs> right. Um... <laughs> I've got, I've got some stats for you, one which I missed rather badly. Um, Love a stat. Love a stat. Olu Lawal, I probably got that wrong. He yeah. scored, he, he became a 1,000th player to score for the club. That's in, if you include own goals. Take all the own goals out when he was 999. So the 1,000th then will be Benji Mensa. Uh, make about what you will. Uh, Wokin's, uh, well, Woking. I think Worthing, has their fourth goal was their 100th goal of the season Saturday, if I haven't already mentioned it. There you go, some stats. Our average attendance, uh, just under 1,700, 1,691. Phenomenal, but it's not based on an even playing field of previous years because there were so many discounts, of, including people under 20, age of 23 paying one under 1 16th full admission price for a number of games. So it's not an act. And you, you can't do an even comparison, is what I'm saying, Lee. Um, but still, they're good figures. We won't knock that. Indeed, <laughs> hearing me. Um, <laughs> we had we we had we had another question uh, that's related to what Lee was saying uh, just before Dave's touch was after getting to a final or two finals of the cups, but not getting the playoffs. Or sorry, after getting to last season final, but not getting to the playoffs this season, is it a failure this season technically in terms of not reaching the playoffs? Yeah. Because uh, the County Cup is great. Uh, we love it. But in the grander scheme of things, it is not a major trophy. It's it's a nice one to win. And uh, Hearts FA have already taken it back. <laughs> they reclaimed it last season. So it's not sitting in our boardroom for the rest of the year, which which is lunacy. We've won it. Um, yes, it, 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 it has been a backward step this season from last year, in effect, really. It's got to be, hasn't it? 
I think it's a failure in so much that the position that we found ourselves in so close to the end of the season and the form that we were showing suggested we should have kicked on. Uh, failure, such a strong word, but I, I guess it can be seen as it because we haven't, we should be challenging. And it's not as though we've got a team which has run away with the league again, you know, and we've been there or thereabouts and we've been stepping toe-to-toe with some of these top contenders in our division. So I'm not entirely sure. Is it a failure? Yeah, I guess it is. So, uh, and, and to be fair, it needs to be looked at. It needs to be addressed. And you're only going to do that by investing in the side. You know, Tav, you spoke about there, mate, all this, if there is outside investment coming in, great. But we need to ensure that some of that is going in into the playing side because... For all the for all the concessions is great, and to see the terraces full is fantastic. But that has to that has to connect with the with the product that we're providing, and um, our budget is modest. And we've said this time and time again, and the club aren't sustainable in in its current guise. So it's very easy to spend money that isn't ours. But if there is more investment coming in, I'd like to see a lot of that go into our playing side. Mm. I would say it's only a failure compared to last season's playoff position. The overall season, yeah. no, it's not. It's not. It's not a failure. No, um, no, it's, 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 I've been saying something here. Announcement of an appointment of our new commercial manager. Anybody got anything on that? Oh goodness me, no. I think, is it? Is it for us? No, uh, hopefully not. But my opinion, quickly on if it's a failure. I think in terms of last season, set the high the bar very high, didn't it? It was a season that was a brilliant season. Get the playoff final. Set the bar very high. And if you look at the table, if we, if we win Saturday, we only finish five points off our points tally from last season. So you could argue it's a very, very minor difference. Big difference, though, is the goal difference. That was plus 21 last season. It's only plus 10 this season. I don't think we'll be scoring 11 goals at Tombridge on Saturday, but you never know. Um, so it, it is a failure, I suppose, in that sense, not getting to the playoffs this season because we set the bar and think, at the fans' forum, I think, Lee, it's right that they did talk about that playoffs was the aim, didn't they? That That is the goal of the season. And to not reach that, I suppose, does, does set that bar. So it's close this season. It could be, you know, it could only be a couple of points come five o'clock on Saturday. But I suppose it is technically a failure. A backward step, maybe, rather than failure. How about that? Yeah. Oh, bloody hell, that's positive for you, Dave. And I think that's, actually, that's a fair point. And hey, at least we're not involved in a relegation battle. No, as you, as you two mentioned, uh, Dartford haven't relegated Eastbourne full time. They could yet go down, probably won't. Um, even now, dear friends at Hemel could go down. Um, it's incredible some of the clubs that have been in trouble this season. So uh, maybe we haven't done too badly. Exactly. Right, at the start of this season, um, we had an interview. We haven't had one since. It's been our most watched interview of all the ones we've done, Ian Allenson. We've got another one coming up in a couple of weeks' time. I'm going to mention it now. So anybody wants to get any points in, get any questions in, um, they can do so. It concerns a chap here, a letter there from Fulham Football Club, oh, yeah. announcing the signing of John Mitchell in 19, February 1972. They signed him for 250 quid. They're going to give us another 500 when he's played six games. We certainly did that. He scored a cup semi-final goals and got them to Wembley in 1975, so they certainly got their money back. So we'll be talking about that because John Mitchell is coming on the podcast and probably also talk about this game when George Best scored at Clarence Park. What a day, what a day. And loads of other things. I met up with Mitch yesterday. He's in great form. Uh, it'd be a good uh, chat. So any points you want to get in, send them in. Not many podcasts where one of the hosts holds up photos and, and documents from many decades ago. So... You don't get that anywhere else, at least. <clears throat> oh, dear. Yeah. Well, I think I said that. Yeah, we're there. On, on, on that, note, on that note, I best we better say goodbye if no one else has got anything. Um, so it's Pod Full of Saints on Twitter, email description below, Pod Full of Saints on Spotify. Get in contact with your family to say. I'm sure we'll all wish the best of luck to all the Hertfordshire clubs involved in the final day relegation battles this weekend. Best of luck to everyone. We'll see what happens. And we will speak to you again next week once the Saints surely pick up their final three points of the season. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye.